Lots of trials are about to start as we try to figure out how to put in strict 6, 7, and 8. And the instructions seem very straightforward. They've given us a set of measurements at various points, at various frames. And those measurements are between the outer edge of, of um, streak 2 and the inner um, side of streak 6. What I've done is I've made up these little pieces of paper which relate to each of the stations and actually marked the, um, the distance on it. In this case it's um, station K which is 27 inches and then I've used this to mark a line on the frame of the model. But before we go on, let me go through the uh, process I've used to develop the clamps to hold the streaks in place. Being a model student, of course, I'm going to follow exactly what Greg and David suggest and they are suggesting that I use zip ties uh, to hold the planks against the model. So with that in mind, I decided to do a little experiment and try the zip ties to see how the streak would fit up against the frame. And I have to say, although in some cases they worked perfectly well, where there was a lot of pressure um, to bend the streak, I was not happy with how it came out. So I decided to look at some options. These are the clamps that I developed, um, and I'll go through how I make them up. It's made up of a Allen key or hex head bolt with a nut on it, a regular washer, a wooden washer which in fact becomes the top end of the clamp and a wooden nut, a nice big wide wooden nut that allows me to push it through the frames, um, screw on and tighten up uh, and squeezes the streak against the frame. So to make this up we made a little jig that we could drill the holes and we wanted a real nice tight fit on the top part of the clamp that was movable. So we did this on the drill press and then repeated this and made about 20 of them over and over again. Um, when drilling the hole you just want to make sure that um, it's a fairly tight fit so that it, you don't get a rocking motion. Um, then we took some hardwood and uh, drilled some holes and then we tapped these. Um, of course we put some CA on it to make sure that the thread doesn't wear too much and then re-tapped it again and finally just put it on the gym bonds and cut out and this makes a series of fairly wide nuts that allow us um, to have something substantial to hold on the outside of the hull um, because that's really one of the challenges we had. I know these uh, clamps will evolve in time so at some point in time in the future when I've had enough time to allow the my design to, to evolve I'll do a short video of how, how I made up these clamps. The next job is to whip up some blank stock and we've gone to our juniper um, pile and the first stack is some 12 by 3 um, and this applies to streak 6 and 8 and then some 14 by 4.5 which um, is used to construct streak 7. So I like to draw out my understanding of how these streaks are to be made up. Um, it's just the fastest way to get to the correct um, answer. So here are the various measurements at the different frames. In this case, center, E, K, and fifth forward. Um, this is a cant frame. Um, where I have the join, which remember might be slightly different from where um, Greg suggested, sorry, David suggested that the join be. Um, it's 12 inches wide, 3 inches thick, and it goes, tapers towards the front, and this was one of the areas of concern. Um, I have it tapering down to 10 inches. The second streak is 14 inches <coughs> and 4.5 inches thick, and that 
um, ends at the center here and the thickness here um, this distance here is five inches and the third streak which is number eight is exactly as number six 12 by 3 and again I have it tapering down to 10 inches here so that we should have 20 inches at this point in time uh, on the front of the stem and the last part um, we're reducing the thickness down to two and a half inches both at the front and at the at the stern um, so we just need to to remember that the inside taper um, is 16 feet and it starts from the end which we have as five inches from the end of the streak and we go up here to 16 feet and of course not to be outdone although this is um, clear in the book I just again for a matter of getting to make sure I understand the instruction in the book I draw these things out and repeat it over and over so that I get it right. You may not be able to see these quite easily but I've made up a series of spacers. This is station center, this is station E, this is station K and this is forward cant frame 5. And we're using these to help um, bend the piece in place which will give us the, the dimension line. So we put the spacers in place and now we can really draw a reference line. Find exactly where strike six goes in terms of the stem, we decided that it actually goes right at the base of the timber heads. And we did this by looking at some of the photographs that are taken by various builds. So back to photographs. Um, some of these are from Ben, some of them from Greg, to try and determine exactly how this uh, strike was put in place. And I think after looking at these photographs, fairly comfortable that I had, I had found the right place. Of course, one of the interesting things when you start doing this model is you find some of the mistakes. And one of them is that I hadn't sanded this down enough so that when I tried to put streak six in, it was actually sticking above the stem. Um, so I've had to sand this down in place and unfortunately enough been able to do that without any problem. Lots and back and forward is the best way to, to line this up and after much trial and error I decided to establish an inner button which I would push strike six onto and that I would start with the middle section and then move to the bow and then when that was completed move to the stern. So here's the button um, attached to the stem at the bow and clamped and then we have the first 24 foot um, strake number six put in place and pinned and I will put quite a few more dowels um, to hold this in place. This is what the front of strake six looks like. We'll now take it and fit it on the model. This was a bit of trial and error. We left about um, six inches in the front that we could adjust and kept going until we got a perfect fit with the join at the, um, at the back. And we've done the trial fit of the front piece and have two dowels in the back. So all we have to do now is to take the front of it down to two and a half inches. Of course, because I'm on soft ground, in other words, I'm not 100% confident <laughs> that what I'm doing is correct. It's certainly only sticking all of this with, um, with PVE, so that if I make an error, I can reverse it.
And now for the forward part of the streak six. Um, again, just being very careful to push it down and push it hard against the button that we've placed there. Another good reason for using PVA is it gives us lots of working time while we fit these difficult pieces together. We've put in the third piece, which is starting to go aft now, and pinned it, and used the same spacers. Fully clamped up, with my clamps working perfectly in this instance. The, um, the instruction don't tell us exactly where the aft taper starts. Um, so in my case, I have decided that the last little piece of the strake um, in the stern is what I'm going to taper. It refers to um, <coughs> a slight taper to ten and a half inches. So hopefully that's enough. Um, if it's not, when I put in um, strake number seven, I'll start the taper a little further, um, a little further forward. And now my little clamps are really working quite well. I'm getting used to them, figuring out how to take them in and out. And um, these will only improve over time. I haven't decided yet where I'm going to put a whole bunch of um, dowels throughout the whole piece, remembering these pieces are going to be totally covered up in the end. And I have <laughs> a lot of dowels to make if I'm going to do that. Um, all in all, not too unhappy with how it came out. Um, still uh, challenging to, to bend that last piece. Um, I had to actually curve, cut the curve into it. And maybe I could have done a slightly better job in judging how the, the curve was to be cut. But all in all, not unhappy. And I'm glad to finally get this under my belt. So I think at the top of the curve, all right, it's the inside edge that wasn't too great. Now we repeat the same exercise on the starboard side, and I'll try and get the last piece uh, perhaps a little better. And if I do, maybe I'll uh, redress the port, the last piece on the port side. Um, I'm not unhappy, but I think it could be slightly better, a little, a, a little better curve on the inside of the streak. 